Hey everybody, Paul Smith here again, Donegal, Ireland. I've got to say that now because there's people in Australia following me and people in the Middle East, which is a bit unusual, but how's it going? Good evening from the Middle East. Um, been a while since I got back to you, so I apologise for that. I've been flat out this past kind of week or so. Um, uh, thanks for your response. Thanks for all the shares that you've done of, of, on my page. Um, I got a lot of questions in, a hell of a lot of questions in. I should have clarified perhaps that um, uh, I'm not a psychologist. Um, not a doctor, and I'm not a gynecologist, but I'll do my best, okay? I'll do my best with the questions I've sent in. I can't answer them all. Um, I'll just take a random selection of three questions here, um, quite broad, um, but keep the questions coming in, because some really good ones, and I will get through them all. I'm going to make this a weekly thing, so I will get through them all. Um, get the first question out of the way. Uh, Dear Paul, greetings from Ontario. Ontario. There's actually somebody in the building here from Canada. I have family in Donegal, and that's how I came to see your video. I'm 41, two children, and haven't done much exercise in a long time. I probably have about 10 kilograms to lose. That's just under two stone in, in our money over here. I wouldn't be the most confident person, uh, quite a nervous person, actually. So I was considering seeing a personal trainer. Firstly, uh, what would you recommend I look for in a good PT? Um, me. <laughs> I wish. Canada, send me the ticket, I'll come PTU. you. Um, ideally, um, you'd want somebody that's recommended by a friend, somebody you trust, that has been with somebody and they trust them. So recommendations, to me, are the most important thing. If you get somebody highly recommended, word of mouth is good, talk is good about that person, that's, that, that's what I would go for there. Um, then you want to have a good connection with the person, okay? You want to have a good rapport, you want to feel comfortable with the person. So go, you know, it's like, Shopping for a car before you spend your money, before you invest in this person, uh, invest your time and your money in this person. You make sure you have a good rapport, a good connection with them, um, that you feel comfortable with them. Okay, um, you want somebody who practices what they preach. Okay, now I'm not talking about a man or a woman that's absolutely ripped or shredded, a bikini model, a bodybuilder. You know, because that to sustain that all year round, that's not practical. But what I am talking about is somebody who. Um, who promotes the lifestyle that they're, or who loves the lifestyle that they're promoting? Okay, you know they're 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 being body conscious themselves and nutritionally conscious. Okay, um, yeah, somebody somebody who practices what they preach basically. Um, let me see what else would be a good one. Somebody, yeah, that 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 makes you the priority. That's going to look after your safety in terms of your health, in terms of the exercises they pick for you. So they're not going to have you like swinging from up there on the rafter somewhere and doing weird stuff that they've just invented just because it looks cool or it's gimmicky but somebody's going to keep it sim simple and do exercises that are appropriate for you your body type and your goals okay so those are the those are the main things i'd look for good rapport good recommendation living the lifestyle that they're promoting and looking after you number one you um that's it good luck with that send me a ticket um hi paul I need to develop a regular exercise routine but struggle, struggle with aerobic activity due to autonomic dysfunction. A lack of core is now affecting my balance and gait. I also have a lot of social anxiety around starting a program in case I can't keep up. Okay. Right. I had to look up autonomic dysfunction because it's not something we all know. I had to do a bit of research into it this past few days. So my advice to you, first of all, you've mentioned aerobic activity. Stop doing the aerobic activity. Okay. What you don't need is changes, rapid changes in direction, rapid changes in height, up, down type activities, um, left, right, rapid movements. Like I run a class like that here, another class, you know, a, a high intensity class. That wouldn't be the one for you. Aerobic, that type of aerobic activity is not for you. Now swap that out completely for resistance type training. Most of the time with resistance type training, you're gonna be in the one spot, you're not gonna move. You're gonna be sitting, standing, but you're not gonna move, okay? Parts of your body may move, but that's it. That's much more doable for somebody with that condition, much, much more doable. Um, so swap that out straight away, resistance type activities. Um, you haven't mentioned anything why you're doing aerobic type, but is it fitness, is it fat loss? Don't know if it is, resistance type training will take care of those things as well, okay? Um, the next thing, work to your own ability, okay? Again, aerobic type activities, go, 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 go. Uh -uh. Do it to your own, your own level, okay? You train to your own ability, your own level, okay? So resistance type training to your own level. That's gonna help so much. That's gonna get you in and comfortable. Social anxiety around not keeping up, okay? So I don't know where in the world you are because it was 
vague. Um, consider maybe consider getting a, like a personal fitness coach. Okay, maybe consider going to a gym that you like the look of, that's not too busy. Maybe meeting somebody, a, a personal personal instructor that you get on well with, that you feel there's a connection with. Um, pick a quiet time and book in for a few sessions to get yourself familiar with the gym, familiar with the layout, and familiar with the resistance type training exercises that you want to do. Um, do it at a time that suits you when the gym's quiet, um, when there's no one there, well, it's quiet, quiet as it can be. Um, start slowly building up your confidence, confidence in yourself, confidence in your abilities, confidence in the activities that you're doing, the resistance type training you're doing, and then go from there. Now that'll help with your self-esteem, okay? Help with your confidence, and then, who knows, if you feel that you may want to join a class after that, maybe for social reasons, you could work towards that. But initially, start small, start doing things that you can do, resistance type training, quiet setting, spend a bit of time with somebody who's going to help you to figure out how to do your resistance type training. Familiar in the gym, let the confidence go, keep the pressure off yourself. That's the most important thing keep the pressure off yourself. You need to enjoy what you're doing. You need to enjoy this type of training, okay? You're doing it for you. That's the most important thing. I say to everybody here, I said 150 million times this morning, remember, this is all for a good cause. Everything you do is for a good cause. You, okay? Each and every single one of you. Okay, get another one in. Um, hey, Paul, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Ah, oh, three-month anniversary. Yeah, thank you. Um, what's your take on water? We've been told to drink this amount or that amount. When you're thirsty, when you're not thirsty. What do you think? Thanks. Um, yeah, okay. I get that. I do get that a lot. Some people just can't drink. Some people say, but I'm not thirsty. And I do, I get that. But at the end of the day, 60% um, of us is made up of water. Our whole body, 60% of, of us is water, is fluid, right? So remember that. So it's pretty, pretty important, okay? Um, simple things. When we breathe out, when we breathe, okay? When we sweat, when we go to the toilet for a one or a okay, we lose a lot of fluid, okay? Now, if we're not replacing that fluid, straight away, we're starting to head towards um, dehydration. That's the word, that's, that's the basic word. We're starting to head towards dehydration. So when the liquid coming in isn't matching the liquid going out, we're gonna get dehydrated. It might happen slowly, but we are gonna get dehydrated. And bear in mind that we do sweat every day, okay? We breathe every day. We do ones, some of us do twos every day, okay? So if we're losing it quicker than we're bringing it back in, we're slowly starting to get dehydrated, okay? Now, depending on where we live in the world, we live in a warm, hot country, we're gonna sweat a little more. Here, we don't sweat so much. But what happens here in Ireland or uh, around the world, we live in air-conditioned buildings or we, we uh, work in an air-conditioned building, which could be quite warm. So during the day, we could, we could be sweating more as well, even though we live in a cold country. Older people, don't realize that they're sweating as much because, or not sweating as much, that they're thirsty because they're not tuned in to the thirst sensors. So older people as well might not realize that they are actually thirsty. So there's a lot of things going on. But the basic thing is we're always expiring fluids through our skin. We're always expiring. We need to have fluids coming in. So the little point is how do you know you're dehydrated? Okay, skin's very, very dry. Okay, girls using your moisturizers, your skin's really, really dry. You're tired. How's it going? Back in two seconds. Ah, back again. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, dry skin, um, dehydration. Uh, what else are we looking for? Um, soreness, muscle soreness, okay? Um, tiring, your muscle fatiguing quicker than it should. Um, cramping, cramping's a big one. You're cramping, you're cramping up when you really, really, there's no reason that you should be cramping. That's another co uh, possible uh, side effect of dehydration. Um, what else? Kidney stones. Yeah, but usually by the time you get that far, you know, drastic actions needed. We're trying to catch it before that. Dehydration as well, but delicate subject now, going to the toilet, okay? The number ones, they're a bit smelly, okay? And they're very dark yellow. Dehydration, okay? Dehydration should be a nice off-white, whitey, yellowy, pretty damn clear, and pretty, pretty scent-free, okay? It's dark, smelly, you're dehydrated. Now, the opposite, drinking too much water, okay? We drink water, we drink water, we drink water. Body takes in what it needs, it'll flush out the rest. You'll go to the toilet to get rid of the rest, okay? Now, if you don't have any kidney issues, okay, and you're up all night peeing, okay, 
you're drinking too much water. That's that's really how you figure it out, okay? You're drinking far too much, um, you don't have a kidney issue, going to the toilet load, drinking too much water. So find the balance, okay? You know, do what's good for you, but, but be sensible about it, okay? We need water, we need fluids. Now you get fluids from liquids, okay? Um, from, from obviously from liquids. We need, uh, we can get it from foods, we can get it from vegetables, we can get it from loads of different fruit, loads and loads of types. So as long as you're getting it into you, everything except alcohol, okay? Alcohol doesn't count. Um, but yeah, get your fluids into you. That's the most important thing. Let me see, where are we now? Where are we? Where's the next one? Um, news. News. I've got news here somewhere. Um, yeah, I had a little talk last week about the secrets to weight loss, which was actually the secrets to fat loss. And I hope we, everybody was there. There was a difference between weight loss and fat loss, okay? And calorie deficit. Know your number, okay? You want to lose fat, you need to be in a calorie deficit. End of story. Buy all the ridiculous apps you want. Go to your Weight Watchers, your Slimming World. Do whatever you want, okay? But at the end of the day, that's a calorie deficit you need. All right, you want to know more about that? Ask me questions, okay? Um, but that, that's what it is. Anyway, that talk was very productive. There was over 40 people here, which is fantastic. Um, I didn't charge for that. i uh, supporting a charity called Bumbalance. It's a children's ambulance charity, and I raised just over 200 euros for that. So thanks to everybody who was there and who supported it. I really appreciate it. I didn't think I'd be in a room um, with 40 women, or over 40 women, where I could talk about their menstrual cycles and how they behave during their menstrual cycles and what they're like to live with and get away with it. But somehow I managed to get away with it. It was touch and go there for a while, but I did manage to get away with it. So um, I hope everybody took something from it. Know your number, calorie deficit, that's all I'm saying. Um, let me see, a little competition I had. Yeah, I got my son to pick two random names. What did I do with the names? Um, a male winner and a female winner of the competition. And it's here somewhere. Where did I put it? Where did I put it there? Oh, give me a second. Typical. All right. Ha. Got it. Got my son to pick. I got the list of all the men's names that, that uh, liked and shared and commented and list of all the women's. And my little man came up with Sally McMenamin. So Sally. I'll get in touch, I'll drop you a message so we know that it's the right Sally McMenamin. Um, and the guy was Mark Hegarty. Okay, so both of you, Sally and Mark, I'll be in touch. It's September, some people say it's the start of autumn, I don't know, but let's start clean. If you want to get involved, if you want to get part of this little community, you've got a month's class membership on me, um, which will kick in whenever you start, okay? So there's no pressure to start. If you want to leave it, start whenever you want, but I'll be in touch. So congratulations uh, on that. Um, Waterford Half Marathon. Oh, so Waterside half marathon yesterday down in Derry. A good few people from the from from here took part. Congratulations to you all. The feedback I'm hearing is very good. The times are very good. Uh, conditions not so much, but yeah, when you're out running, it doesn't make a difference. Not really. Okay, as long as it's not too windy. So congratulations on that. Fair play to you all. That's another one under your belt. Set the next goal. Set the next target. Go for it. Um, what else is there? Yeah, timetable changes. Timetable changes coming up. Um, slight change this week, more changes next week, okay? Just trying to fine tune things because I'm only going now, as you know, three and a half, four months, trying to fine tune things. Um, that's it, folks. Keep the questions coming in. Thank you for your support. Um, you know where I am. Send me a message, send me a text, messenger on this, whatever you want. I'll be in touch. Um, calorie deficit, know your number, be good. <laughs>